precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason and this is part one of the Bible study called Righteousness. It's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Isn't that a most wonderful, a most amazing promise from Jesus himself? Jesus, God the Son. And to come to an understanding that righteousness is of God. We'll go and look at some of the verses which relate to righteousness in the Old Testament, which will show that it's not purely that which is in the New Testament. Proverbs, chapter 14, and verse 34 says, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Are to two nations. So, righteousness, according to the Word of God, is there to exalt a nation. Did, did the people of God in the Old Testament, those of Israel, those of Judah, look to look for righteousness? Time and time again, they failed and failed miserably because they were not seeking after God. They were not seeking after that relationship as a nation to be right with God. For righteousness, what is it, righteousness? It is to be right with God, to be in the right relationship with God in the Old Testament, very much relating to a nation, a people, a people of God in Israel and Judah. But were they after God, seeking after God? Were they obeying God? Yes, there were times when, when they sought God. But so often, they were rebellious against God. They were backslidden. They were apostate. But yet this is a most wonderful, wonderful promise to be taken hold of. And when it is not taken hold of, then sin Sin is there, and sin is cutting off, cutting off from God. And how can when God bless that nation? How can God protect that nation? When there is sin between God and those who should be his people. That's what it was in the Old Testament. But we can look at it from the standpoint of today. The promise, although in the Old Testament and in relation to Israel and Judah, is one that can be seen to relate to nations today. And it is whether a nation as led by that which should be leading 
the people of God, when they are in a right relationship with God, whether it be Great Britain, whether it be the United States, whether it be Australia or New Zealand or India, it is being in line with God, giving God his rightful place, being in line with the plan of God, and what is part of that plan of God is to be righteous with God. But when that is not being fulfilled, when, say, with Great Britain, there is not that right being right with God, then the covering, the protection of God will not be there. The protection of the nation will not be there. When there is the worshipping of other gods, when there is the outright worshipping, satanic worship, where there is the worship of Lucifer, the God is still there to keep his promise. And where that promise is kept, he will fulfill his part. It is sin that gets in the way. And sin is very much rebellion against God. The sin of witchcraft is rebellion. The sin of worshipping. Satan himself is rebellion. The sin of putting Lucifer in the place of God is sin. That is sin which affects nations. And God will only fulfill that which he has promised when he finds faith. Faith in that what God has said he is duty-bound to fulfill. When he finds, say, in Great Britain, those who will, whether it be half a dozen, or ten, or whatever, he finds those who will not be moved, those who are filled with himself, and those who will take hold of him and his promises and say, this is what you said. You must fulfill it. And it is the few who can move upon God in these days and be so filled with God, the God of righteousness, that God will hear and God will answer and God will overrule those satanic schemes and the exalting of Lucifer in place of God. Let us give God the glory. Give the Lord Jesus Christ his rightful place in Great Britain. Give him the preeminence. Give him his rightful place in the United States of America and give him his preeminence. And God will do the rest. Turning now to Jeremiah in chapter 23. Read the first six verses. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastures, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. 
ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. So this takes us to a step further in the understanding of righteousness. Yes, being in the right relationship with God. But here we is seen that it is Righteousness is the Lord. Righteousness is God himself. And there is this wonderful, wonderful promise of the coming of a righteous branch. A righteous branch down the line of David, the, the Messiah himself, who would come and come because God had determined that he would intervene. He had seen that his people were scattered. He had seen that those who were called shepherds, the, the, the priests, the teachers of the law, were so often not in the right relationship with God himself. And God was not pleased with what he saw because the people were not being taught through the word of God as to what the law demanded. The commandments of God were not being fulfilled and God had to intervene because time and again those who should have been in such a wonderful relationship with God rebelled against him, went after other gods, served other gods and as it were cast God to one side and so often it was these shepherds that Jeremiah is speaking of who were responsible for this. Because when, when the, those who should be God's, God's people, those who should be teachers of the word of God, preachers of the word of God, are not in that right relationship with God. And how can others hear the word of God and see that 
Yes, the Word of God has a specific message. And that message is that it is God Himself who is draw, seeking to draw unto Himself a people set apart for Himself. And it had to be through the Lord Himself, the Lord our righteousness, the Lord who is righteous, coming initially to Israel, leaving the very glory of the Father, the Messiah, made no manifested, God manifested in the flesh. And Daniel, chapter 9, part of his great prayer. And it's a, a, this prayer, such a wonderful prayer, a model prayer to God. And he includes righteousness. Let us let see now what righteousness meant to, to Daniel. O Lord, that is, Daniel chapter 9, verse 7, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, the, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. So there, there was Daniel praying to the Lord God Almighty. He had realized that God had... God was the one who had sent many from Jerusalem and Judah into the exile of Babylon. But the time of the 70 years exile was now past. And here was Daniel through this prayer birthing that prophecy which Jeremiah had given. And he can see that righteousness is part of the attributes of God, part of his nature. And it is to this that this, he is relating the right, he's relating that God is righteous. And because God is righteous, that which he had promised through, through Jeremiah, Daniel could now stand upon the word of God, as it were, take hold of what God had sealed in his word. By sealed, it is that God had said this, and it could not be changed, it must be fulfilled. And here was Daniel, on the basis of the righteousness of God, the plan of God, bringing before God and saying that you are righteous. Yes, we've been without thee. We, we're nothing without thee. And we have been driven out of our land. But now the time has passed. The exile, the exile according to your word should be over. And he's calling for God to move through all the countries where he, God himself, take note, God himself had driven 
what would have been his people in the right relationship with himself, had driven them into other countries. But now the time had come for him to bring them back to Jerusalem. And not just bring them back to Jerusalem, bring them back into a right relationship with himself. That relationship which relied upon God's character, relied upon God's promise, relied upon God's righteousness. Malachi, last book before the New Testament, there's still that mention of righteousness. Verses 1 and 2. For behold, the day cometh, that you burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them. Set then them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stove. Again, the word of God. What I'm very much looking to emphasize is the word of God. Not only can it be trusted, but it's there with promises which have to be taken hold of. And God, in these days, needs to be challenged. Challenged upon his word. Challenged upon that which is sealed in his word. And challenged that he will fulfill that which is what he has said because he has said it, he, it is in his plan. Not in Satan's plan or, or Lucifer's plan. Not in humanist plans. But in the divine plan. Not the humanistic plan. Not the plan of other religions. But in the plan of Jehovah the plan of Almighty God. So here in Malachi, you see that God was speaking clearly and speaking clearly about purifying. Purifying, yes, it was still in relation to Israel. But looking beyond Israel, looking for the whole world, looking for the Gentiles besides the Jews. And it would be that which would purify not just, not this, just the nation. It would look beyond the nation. It would look to the individual. Man was created in the image of God. A man was created to be, receive a life which would be God-like. And this life would come through the Messiah who we see that was being promised. And this would be through the Son of Righteousness. And who is righteousness? It is God himself. So God was, was promising to take responsibility here. And it would be purifying. It would be healing. 
and the healing would be to bring about the reconciliation between God and man. A man is inclusive of woman because going to its completeness there is neither Jew nor Gentile or male or female but all are one in Christ Jesus. Isn't that something that is so wonderful, so marvelous? And where I started with St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 6. These words were spoken by whom? They were spoken by God the Son himself. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. These are the words, the promise, again a promise, a sealed promise, one that, one, they're just not empty words, they're the words of Almighty God. And because He has said them, He Himself was to be the means of providing that which would fulfill them. Are you yourself hungering? Do you hunger? Do you thirst after righteousness? Because when you are hungering and thirsting after God himself, then righteousness, being part of God himself, part of his very character, his very nature, then righteousness, when you're in that right relationship, with God through Jesus Christ will become part of your nature, part of your character. As we will see as we move on through the parts two and three, more and more of what righteousness is. And righteousness is in the person of Jesus Christ, the one who obtained righteousness so that he could give righteousness unto those who seek him. O God, thy word again is so clear, so clear that it is speaking of what you have said and righteousness being part of thy nature, that you had that plan, a plan which we've seen in the Old Testament and are now seeing in the New Testament, that plan which thy character, thy nature, thy likeness can become part, become the very nature, the very likeness of thyself when it is received through the Lord Jesus Christ, thy beloved Son. Thank thee, Father, that in these days thy word is, has come alive again. And may you draw many to thy word throughout the whole wide world with a hunger and a thirst after, after righteousness which means a hunger and a thirst after thyself in the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom this is brought before thee for thy glory. Amen.